welcome back to the channel you're watching an idiot outdoors this week back out for a stealth camp now tonight they always let the cars pass because they can be quite noisy anyway tonight the missus and the kids are going to the cinema to watch inside out whereas i'm going to the outside in as always you know it Keeping it real, as always. Motorhome. Glamping pod. Log cabin. We're not about that here. We do it proper. So I found a nice little place to do a stealth camp. Now, it is actually, we'll turn around in the corner up there. To the side of me, as you can see, I'm just doing a walk by. Doesn't look like uh, many people will see me go into this camp. I've got a couple of gulls, can't see them in the distance. Wondering why I've got all this gear on my back seeing the faces so yeah I'm gonna just keep walking and I'm gonna double back on myself and I'm gonna sneak into the bush so where I want to get into is there as I say I'm just gonna walk past it just have a little what I want to do is get in there, get set up, and then get bothered by people and have to move on. Well, it seems like a straightforward one. Swing in the left. Ooh. And this is where I want to get to. Now we have got houses up there, but I don't think they're going to be a problem. He's got houses across there, but again, I'm going to be covered. I've got the camo net. So the idea is, let's drop a bag. Get this bag off, mate. So yeah, you have got the mouses there. I'm gonna get the tent in there. I'm gonna get a camo net across there. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna pull these into the camo net and I'm gonna do the same with this one, really pull it in, not cut nothing down. And that should give me enough cover. And also, if it does rain, I've got two options. I can string the tarp across here. And sit under the tarp. Or I can not bother and just sit in the tent. What I am going to do is I'm going to get my pack off. I'm going to hide my pack. Probably in there with my bag I'm gonna put the camo over it because 
I'm going to Aldi and I've got to do a bit of shopping. So, just here, I'll be in my pack under the camo. I'm going to go and uh, do a bit of shopping in uh, Aldi. I've got some stuff, but I want to get some beers. I want to get some snacks. I'm going to be having a barbecue. Yeah, very stealthy, I know. Got a new barbecue. You are going to like this because I'm actually like a kid in a sweet shop since I've had it. Been dying to try it. I'll talk more about. I'll talk more about that as the night goes on. I'll be careful because there's people's gardens there and I'm already being loud and I haven't even had a beer yet so anyway just once again my gear's under that camo net down there he's walking along I mean unless you're really looking for it You'd have to be, really be looking for it. Once again, a quick walk through. The eye's not really going to pick that up, so I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to get myself down to Aldi. Aldi, by the way, it's just there. Bag of swag. Casually walk into the bush. Normal. Straight away, I can hear a robin. Unscathed. It's been threatening to rain ever since I've come out. <clears throat> Keeps going grey. It's forecast on and off throughout the night. So I didn't waste any time in getting myself the tent up. Bare minimum. Also, Molly decided to do a live stream amidst all that and I've been trying to listen to it and sort of chat in the live stream as and when I can. It is... Not too far away from the road as you can see. They've stopped to give way because you've got speed humps and a uh, priority system. Anyway, back to it. So yeah, I've got the tent up and while I was at it, I've done everything I need to do so I can literally just sit and chill. As I say, the camo net paid dividend this time. I am keeping me on the mouses over there because there is quite a few openings in front of me. As you can see, it's, you can see it better with the actual human eye rather than the camera decisions decisions i have got a stella to drink and a lovely the hop foundry pale ale from aldi pineapple as you can see i do love me pale ales so from where i am as you can see Can't see me getting any bother in here. And if it rains, certainly not gonna get any bother in here. So yeah, I'm happy in the knowledge now, if it does rain, I can get in the tent. 
mean, I was thinking about putting the tarp up, but I don't know what to do. Depends how bad it gets. If it gets really bad, I'll string the tarp up. It won't take me long. But if it's just light showers, I'll be in and out of the tent. It hasn't went need be. I mean, there's quite a bit of cover from the trees, but you'll still get wet. Anyway, it was a stellar. Cheers, guys. certainly wet the whistle. I'm going to take this opportunity to say last week's intro was just a bit of a mess around. I've been uh, playing around with ideas. Can't quite settle on an intro. So from now on I'm taking it back to the one that you've seen at the beginning. A shortened version of what the channel's all about. The no nonsense, getting out there, no airs and graces, you know, keeping it real, super real. Keep it real. We've got some birds fighting in the bush. I'm going to say birds fighting in the bush. I mean the feathered kind. So I've cracked open this um, the Hop Foundry Pale Ale Pineapple. No smell in it. It really does smell like pineapple. It smells gorgeous. Tasting it, I'm not going to lie. If you love your pale ales and you love your really hoppy, or should I say, actually, that's not an IPA, it's just a pale ale. Sorry, it's a pale ale. Um, for some reason I picked it up thinking it was an IPA but I'm not disappointed with that at all it is really really nice now I'm not here to review beers that's not what I'm about I don't do reviews I'm, I'm, but I'm just saying that, that <laughs> it smells apart but it don't taste like pineapple but it does taste like a really really good IPA really hoppy it's more on the it'd be like saying wine tastes like grapes no it doesn't if you wanted if you wanted it to taste like pineapple you'd be disappointed you'd be really disappointed I'd say it, 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 it messes with the mind because it smells like pineapple but it tastes like real real cit citrusy IPA it, I don't think pineapples no it's not citrusy is it citrus is like your lemons your limes maybe someone's gonna call me an idiot yet again on my channel but I don't mind I am the idiot I can take it on the chin it's big enough but anyway it's really really nice I could drink that all night even if it does confuse the mind a little bit, but yeah. Anyway, talk way too much about a pineapple pale ale, not pineapple India pale ale. I hope people don't come out into their gardens because they're going to hear me. So it's actually a lovely little green. We've come for a walk round. Obviously those are your houses at the back. And we've got houses on the other side of these trees and bushes and whatnot. That's my camo net. And the tent. I have just had some guy come in stopped there realized that there's a tent here didn't know i'm sat sort of in there and he's uh 
took a slash up the tree, sort of in there, but he could see he was very nervous and panicky about it. Um, did the fastest we ever, <laughs> and then he's gone running out. But the fact that now he knows I'm here, I've gone out behind him, like he didn't see me follow him, but I've had a look who it is just in case I get any bother. So I've now got a person to match us. If anybody comes and gives me bother, I'll recognize, you know, obviously. But hopefully I'd like to think that he'll think I'm not bothering anybody. So please don't come bothering me. But this is the risk you take when you stealth camp, ain't it? So, but once again, And you've got dog walkers. I mean, from over there. It's quite concealed. The further back you go, the more concealed it gets. Anyway, that guy has actually took a leak where I've been using the toilet. I always try and keep well away from where I'm sleeping. But when I say using the toilet, I mean obviously a number one, not a number two. Of course. Just yet. Back in the bush. I'll get my jacket on, I'm getting a bit cold. So yeah, he's coming here and he's done his business up here while I've been sat there. Yeah, so it may have slipped my attention that I didn't get the old thermometer out, did I? I mentioned it last week that I was getting a bit sloppy with the old thermometer. It's saying it's about 14 degrees, but I feel colder than that, so I'll come back to it in a minute when it settles down and we'll see what the temperature is. However, I have got something to show you. In fact, before I do that, I'm gonna get the down jacket on because I am really cold. So the temperature has dropped. It is actually about 11 degrees and That rain started. As you can see. Gets any worse, I'm gonna take refuge inside the tent. Yeah, it's soaking out there. But in here, barely anything. Obviously it's giving us good cover. It will start to drip through the uh, leaves though. And you will end up with a saturated tent. Well, on the outside obviously, but camo net. Upside down chair, don't want it getting soaked. So what I did want to show you was that this. That is in fact a barbecue. We're gonna do it one-handed. So we've got the grill itself. Bear with me. And then you've got two main sections. It's 
stainless steel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it together because I need two hands for this task. I'll bring you back when it's put together and I'll show you what it looks like. There we have it, flat pack barbecue. Now, this is courtesy of Chris. Chris who's come camping a few times. Uh, I work with Chris and uh, he says to me, he'd seen this online and he asked me, I'm going to order one, do you want one? And I reluctantly says no, because it being stainless steel, I was expecting it to be, I, I don't know what I was expecting, I really didn't. And when Chris showed it me, well, he came into work with it and he says, I'm going to give you this <clears throat> I'm going to order another one because you're out every week. So this is in fact courtesy of Chris. Thank you very much, Chris. But yeah, when I set it up and I seen it, I was like a kid in a sweet shop and Chris can vouch for that. But... I mean that is absolutely awesome but it just so happens to be raining now and I didn't set the tarp up and everything I've brought for tonight's meal is based on having a barbecue I mean I've got a bag of coals there um, hot dog rolls I might have to resort to um, cooking them conventionally in a pan but if the rain stops you know I'm giving that a whirl tonight. Again, thank you, Chris. Chris gets the credit for that one. But yeah, he reckons he's going to order another one. But as I say, well impressed. Stainless steel. Lightweight. And literally... Sorry, just bear with me. I'm inside a tent now because it's raining. Packs to that size now. That's my hand. That'll easily slip in the back of your pack. You wouldn't even know it's there. Also, there is the tiniest, tiniest little slope tonight. So I am going to be sleeping the opposite way around. Ideally, your feet should be down that end. And the lantern is where it is, so you don't keep banging your head on it. And it's nice. Uh, actually, when I do sleep that end, I do like the fresh air that comes in the tent. But you don't have the headspace, hence. This is why you are ideally meant to sleep that end. And have your feet down there. Unless you're one of these people with the most humming feet ever, I don't think it matters which end you sleep. Personal preference, but as I say, it's nice to have the head height so you can sit up. So right here is the barbecue, prepped for the very first time. I'm going to get it lit. Currently in red light mode. That's not be too obvious. I do like this red light mode on this new head torch. Very impressed. Currently just waiting for the flames to uh, disappear and then I'm going to put the grill on and I'm going to cook some food because I am really hungry now. Mm. 
nice little hand warmer. Excuse me. Awesome. So on the barbecue tonight, we've got some marinated king prawns. I mean, you can read that obviously. I've got some chicken drumsticks and I've got some pork and apple sausages in the tin foil. And I've also got, ooh, where are we? Upside down, but hot dog buns. Yep, rather wet tonight. Anyway, let's get cooking. Right, we've got the uh, chicken drumsticks on the old barbecue. Need to charge my phone. So while that's cooking, I'm gonna uh, shove my phone on charge. So far, so good. So we have got some lovely pork and apple sausages, some prawns, chicken drumsticks, and we've got not open yet. And I've still got some more prawns to cook. Or should I say just heat up a little. But yeah, I'd say that is a success. Winner, winner. Awful weather. Nice prawns. Yama. I mean, if you was walking back to camp, it's, it's evident. Someone's had a good time. Ten degrees in June. We have had some uh, cool temperatures, to be fair. But anyway, I'm gonna uh, tidy up and get in the tent. So the idiot has emerged. Been awake for about half an hour. I tried something last night. I've been watching Wiltshire Man's channel. <clears throat> and I'm gonna turn the camera around and I'll show you what I've tried yeah on one of his videos it was talking about how he'd learnt from somebody else about putting the actual sleeping pad inside the sleeping bag I've actually never actually thought about that because to be fair I thought it'd be just too much of a squeeze inside you basically put the pad right the way down to the end and then you just and I've, I've got to be honest I've had the best night's sleep I've had since I've been sleeping on sleeping pads noisy motorbike yeah so 
a big thank you to Wilshireman, Wilshireman should I say, for that tip. And thank you for the person who gave them that tip. But yeah, I think that's what I'm going to be doing from now on. And it also gives extra protection to your sleep pad. Although I do want to get a lighter sleep pad. Because this does take up quite a bit of space in my pack. Although it is very comfy. And the... Two season sleeping, one to two season sleeping bag is more than enough at the moment. It, it feels really thin, but even when the temperatures dipped last night, I was plenty warm enough. Well, that was a success. As usual, kettle's on. Yorkshire tea. Breakfast of champions. Should have got some proper breakfast to be fair. Because my cook set stayed clean. Obviously. Did have a good rain last night. I was sitting in there, but I can't really make a brew in there in that little area. It's a bit tight. It was all right to have a beer and chill with the light on. Lovely cup of tea. Beautiful. So yeah, I've just uh. Have a look at my notifications on my phone and I've just noticed there's a question on one of my old videos the one where I camped at Wix's yeah someone's a bit late to the party on that one but um, what was the question why does everybody have to drink and then instead of a question mark it was a dash uh, it comes across as they're not too happy about Obviously, they're watching these camp videos and people are having a beer and whatnot. Well, if you follow the channel, you'll understand that I work nights. Saturday night is the one night that I go out camping. Unless, obviously, I'm on holiday from work or whatever. But yeah, predominantly Saturday night. As I mentioned in the answer in the comments, I like to have a beer and I like camping. So... I do the both on a Saturday night. I think after a, a week at work, you know, I'm entitled to have a beer. Um, I'm sorry if that offends you, but you know, there's quite a few people doing these channels, and I'll happily have a, a few beers while they're camping. We're not doing anybody any harm. I don't see a problem. Also. Typical night down the pub now on a Saturday night could easily cost you 50 quid. And by the time you paid for your points, you're talking nearly a fiver a point. And then obviously I'd have to get an Uber there, Uber back. Easy 50 quid for one night in the pub. I can come out camping, um, have a beer, buy some food to cook. Probably two and a half times for what it maybe even three times what it had cost me for a night in the pub I suppose if I went to the pub had a skinful and then come out and had a some food I could probably go camping four times for what it had cost me to do that yeah I'd much rather be here than in the pub. What I'm on about, I am in a pub. My, it's not a 
pub is it? It's just a gimmick. The outside in. But you know what I'm saying. I've got to talk quiet because I can hear people in their gardens. Train going past. There's a train line behind, behind those houses. So, yeah, a lot of people say to me, um, you know, don't respond to the negativity or anything. Like, I don't mind people being critical of what I do or asking me questions, be it positive, negative. As long as you're obviously not trolling me and stuff like that, because I won't, I won't respond to that. But you're entitled to have your opinion about stuff, and that's totally fine. And I'll do my best to give a, a good, honest answer. I'm just putting the kettle back on. A little thirsty this morning, and another good cup of tea, as you know. Uh, yeah, back to the yeah. So I was on about obviously answering people's questions. Now, while I'm on it, last week, uh, me mentioning the mozzies, I got called an idiot because obviously I don't know too much about mozzies and I know they are about, I've actually seen them, I'm out there, uh, but I was on about being bitten. I've been bitten by something numerous times, even, this, even in the cooler months. Um, now, instead of calling me an idiot, you could have just basically uh, educated me. I'm happy to learn stuff, you know. I don't know everything. I'm still learning on my camping. You know, it's a learning curve. You learn by your mistakes. Now, just because a person doesn't know something, it doesn't make them an idiot. Now, my missus has got a degree. She went to sixth form, then she went on to university in Bournemouth. Uh, she's very clever, my missus. Very, very clever. A lot cleverer than me. But that doesn't make me an idiot. She she knows stuff that I don't, and I know stuff she doesn't know. Uh, she's she's got a degree. She's as I say, she's very clever. But if her car breaks, I'm the one who fixes it. Her gearbox failed. I put a new, a new gearbox. Well, weren't a new gearbox, but I put a replacement gearbox in it. Uh, next day, her car was back on the road. Happy days. A clutch went. I replaced the clutch. If she has um she has a blown cylinder head. I'll fix it. So I know stuff she doesn't. She knows stuff I I don't. But that doesn't make us equally stupid, does it? It's you know we all know different stuff. So instead of basically saying to somebody you're an idiot because you don't know something, I'd rather somebody say actually, you know, you won't get bitten this time of the year or such and such. I did do a little bit of research after, and people are being bitten by muzzies at the moment. Uh, and I do believe now after researching it, the, it's the female that does the biting because she needs the protein from the blood to make eggs. Uh, but I don't know if she makes eggs at this part of the year. I don't know. I didn't research that much into it. To be fair, I'm not really that interested in mozzies as long as they're not biting me, you know? But yeah. So maybe next time, instead of being that guy, just tell me. Yeah, all ears, man. What I do like about this barbecue, it uses the bare minimum amount of coals, so you're not wasting charcoal. So that's got to be a good thing. Whereas you'd use one bag of charcoal on a barbecue, a standard size small barbecue, I'd say. This can literally use a handful of coals for good results so yes very very well impressed obviously the ground's damp it was raining I think what would benefit to put in the pack be a piece of carbon felt to put it on so if the, the ground is dry Rather than damping the ground and wasting water, 
could be an idea just to put it on a, as I say, a piece of carbon felt. Uh, a bit like a plumber's soldering mat that they put behind when they're soldering pipes. A piece of that, I don't know. But yeah, as I say, once again, I'm like a kid in a sweet shop. Or well, for the Americans, a kid in a candy shop. I'm actually still using the uh, captain stoves for making a cup of tea. I think they're actually better than the spirit burner I've got. Use a bare, bare amount of alcohol you need just to make a brew. And if you've seen in previous videos how they flame out once you've got the kettle on top of them. So yeah, through watching Tim's channel and actually camping with Tim and seeing how Tim... Hello Blackbird. So yeah, through watching Tim's channel, Tim at Hard Up Hiker, through watching his channel and actually also doing a camp with him and of course Molly at Camping Rules, okay, when we did the Peak District, but going back to his channel and watching him do his cooking, it made me aware as to actually how much alcohol, when I say alcohol, bioethanol, on my stove, how much alcohol I was actually wasting whilst cooking, and actually how inefficient. Oh, I can't reach it. But my standard stove, my like my Trangia style burner, it's not a Trangia, it's a, a ripoff, it does the same thing, I'd say, but they're not the most efficient. So, as I say, through watching how little alcohol Tim uses to do his cooking. I think he says in the typical, I'd be guessing figures, I'd be guessing figures here, but I just know that Tim could make that go that, hello, Tim could make a bottle of that go probably three times what I used to use. So yeah so noisy around here but then when you camp next to a road what do you expect but yeah again so always learning always learning and it's through that that I've actually now started using these yeah I made that myself I've spoke about it before a little captain stove but as I say, put the bare amount of alcohol you need in, windshield, and yeah. I'm always saying, keep it real. I tell you, he's really keeping it super real. You've got Tim, already mentioned, at Art of Hiker. He's basically doing a series where he's walking the length of the Thames it's a mixture of day hikes, overnight camping uh, where he can, but he's basically starting at the Thames Estuary and he's walking the whole length all the way up to where the Thames begins from a spring in Kemble, I think it's Kemble, in the Cotswolds. Uh, I've been really enjoying it. I wish I'd watched, waited and watched them all back to back. They're that you know engrossing and enjoyable and it's really really knowledgeable how much you actually learn just from Tim walking along the river and then you've got at camping rules Molly I know these are my friends but I've been watching their content and they are pushing out some real I think it's far better than the stuff I do far better you've got Molly he's walking across England backpacking across England uh, I've been watching that as well, he's been doing that in series and obviously before 
sun goes down he obviously has to find somewhere safe to camp and whatever else and has to find water and same as Tim if he's also Tim's going to be doing a series of videos from his West Island Way walk in Scotland I, I know all about this because obviously they're with me, me like sort of friend circle on YouTube and you know we speak to one of them all the time but they are definitely definitely worth following they're putting out the content is you know next level some of the editing and the work that goes into it if you haven't subscribed to them give them a look I'm, I'm guarantee you you will get addicted to the stuff they're putting out it's really really good I, I know I know it seems like I'm trying to plug their channel but they, they seriously seriously deserve it man they are keeping it real So you remember my tips from the earlier videos in the early days, make sure your poles are out the way. I swear somebody just saw me as they walked past you. Yeah? Make sure your poles are well out the way so you don't stand on them. And always count your tent pegs back in, remember how many you use. So in this setup I always use nine, however, I've only got nine left. I broke one last night, uh, I stamped on it and I sort of slipped and bent it, when I straightened it back again it snapped. Oh dear. So yeah, I'm going to order some more of them anyway. They don't last forever, like anything. Anyway, back to it. As you can see, all packed up now, camo nets down, just shows you how effective that net is. That's where we had the chair last night. Thanks to the cooler bag, we had some lovely cold beers, kept the milk cold as well, although the temperature's not the warmest at the minute. It's 
still finding junk. It's not my junk, but I'll take it with me anyway. Keep Britain tidy. While we're on the tidy subject, there's my bag of rubbish. As always, leave it as you found it. Apart from the indentations from uh, my backside, obviously, where I've uh, been sleeping. But yeah, as always, don't give us a bad name. Leave no trace. So yeah, that was another successful stealth camp, or should I say, urban stealth camp. That seems to be uh, cropping up a lot now. Wobbly stick, do apologise. Obviously, apart from the guy coming in last night to urinate. Other than that, I think he was more weary of the fact that there was a tent in here. I've never seen anybody move so fast after uh, using the toilet, but anyway, he never bothered me. I'm not going to bother him. It's actually quarter to two. Didn't even realise the time. Half the time, I don't look at the time when I'm out camping. Yeah, I find a lot of people, they're straight out of the camp in the morning, up and gone. Whereas I'm more, I like to actually enjoy the morning, have a cup of tea, just chill. I find some people are there just for the night, they do get levered, and then in the morning, straight gone. I mean, when, when I'm with Chris and Ryan, or when I've been with Molly and Tim, that we've cooked food, we've, we've had hot drinks, we've chilled, you know? I never find there's a rush to get out of there in the morning, but that's me. I mean, some might even say that's not really stealth camping, is it? Well, camping somewhere where you're not really supposed to be and getting away with it, that's stealth camping to me. Anyway, I do need to get out of here now. So I'm gonna get the pack on the back and I'm gonna go the scenic route. Right, so it's out of here we go. That was a lovely camp. Nice and chilled. Sorry about the shaky camera, it's a bit of a rubbish selfie stick. Yeah, there's a lot of people in their gardens, a lot of banging, a lot of, you know, but then you've got to expect that, ain't you, if you camp by somebody's garden. Next week I'm going to be talking about a trip I've got planned and there's going to be eight of us. I'm not going to talk about it now, I'll talk about it in next week's video because oh, it's a bit boggy here. Yeah. yeah, I'll be talking about it in next week's video because it'll be the week after that that we're doing on this trip. I can tell you it's the Peak District, so that's going to be good. Anyway time to wrap this up let's put some stuff down so I've got a hand free all right it's been great having you along keeping it real as always please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one